we can go ahead with the uh, CBD resection and RUNY hepaticojejunostomy. Okay, so this is regarding cholangiocarcinomas. So the next topic is hemobilia. How to remember hemobilia? It is basically heme or blood going inside the biliary system. So it is blood going in biliary system. Okay. So the most common cause is iatrogenic trauma. Generally due to PTC percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram. Other causes can be a blunt trauma to the abdomen or it can occur due to presence of gallstones. Okay. So, just uh, this diagram will give you a basic idea regarding hemobilia. This is liver, this is gallbladder, then this is bile duct and this bile duct is going in the uh, duodenum where it is joining the pancreatic duct. Okay. Now, there is some puncture here and due to which there is rupture of some blood or arterial bleeding is there which goes into the intrahepatic biliary radical and from there it is the blood clots reach in the CBD and from the CBD they will go into the duodenum and from the duodenum there can be either hematemesis or melina. Okay, and the patient generally presents with GI bleed. Okay, so what happens is patients presents with abdominal pain, also known as clot colic or abdominal colics because of clot, and there can be development of jaundice due to this blood clots which is present in the GI, in the biliary system jaundice and there is presence of GI hemorrhage which can be hematemesis or melina okay now two important and frequently asked questions what is the name of this triad It is known as Sandblom or Quinquase Triad. Okay, so Quinquase Triad or Sandblom Triad is seen in Hemobilia. Now, the next thing is uh, this bleed is most commonly arterial. And among the hematemesis and melina, most commonly it is melina. Because melina requires less amount of blood, melina generally requires 40 to 60 ml of blood is required. For melina to occur, okay. So that is why generally melina occurs. Now, how to man, uh, what is the investigation of choice? First investigation is any patient coming to us with GI bleed, we will first do upper GI endoscopy. But the investigation of choice or which is both diagnostic and therapeutic is angiography. Okay. So, angiography is both diagnostic, we can see that there is some bleed and we can embolize. So, it is both diagnostic and therapeutic. Okay. Now, regarding the treatment part, most patients are managed conservatively. If not responding, then treatment is angioembolization. 
majority patient responds to angioembolization if not responding we can go with surgical ligation of the bleeding vessel but the treatment of choice is angioembolization okay now the next topic is bilhemia how to remember bilhemia this is basically while going in blood or heme okay now why it is occurring okay uh, in case if there is a cbd stone or any other cause of biliary obstruction due to this increased biliary pressure there can be rupture of the bile duct and there can be a development of a communication between the uh you can say bile duct or the uh, blood vessel generally it occurs intrahepatically that a small intrahepatic biliary radical they rupture and any hepatic venous or the portal venous um, al along with any hepatic venous or portal venous blood vessel there is a communication okay so due to this increase in the biliary pressure there is rupture leading to a communication and bile goes in portal venous or hepatic venous branches now what will happen that the bile is going into the blood and there is rapid development of jaundice and patient is becoming very sick okay so there is in clinical features there is a rapidly developing severe jaundice along with that there is a septicemia okay and this bile is because of this obstruction the bile is infected there is uh, infection and this bile which is going into the blood so there is rapidly developing severe jaundice an lft we will be seeing very high direct hyperbilirubinemia without elevation of enzymes or liver enzymes okay now what is the treatment treatment is to relieve obstruction and to relieve obstruction we will have to go ahead with ercp and biliary stenting ercp is both diagnostic as well as therapeutic in these patients so ercp is both diagnostic and therapeutic and we will be able to diagnose that there is presence of some stone or some other problem leading to biliary obstruction we can put a stent in case if there is stone we can remove a stone also because it is very urgent because it can prove fatal also to the patient because of the septicemia so that is why we are going ahead straight with ercp and which is the investigation of choice in these cases okay and we generally do uh, biliary stenting or endoscopic sphincterotomy 